You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, July 1st show. My goal is to keep you up to date on the latest news and trends in our local economy. Keep me tuned in and I will keep you informed. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but I'm here to answer any questions that you have and more importantly, connect you with the guests that I have on the show today. You can call at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 1- 855-411-50 or online at themoneyr.com. In studio right now, Dan Wingard with Super University, common entrepreneurial mistakes and how to avoid them. So if you're thinking of being an entrepreneur, uh, getting into that field, I've got a great guest. Dan, thank you so much for joining me back in studio. My pleasure, Tina. Always a pleasure. And a little bit about Dan. Dan Wingard captures audiences with motivational messages and musical wow factor that sparks creativity, ignites innovation, and leads to a purpose full productivity. He's a graduate of Accomplishment Coaching. He is a certified startup expert, trained to build six-figure businesses, was the CEO for Keller Williams Realty in Bellevue, and now leads their productivity coaching program. Dan has been a consistent six-figure entrepreneur while incorporating his passion for music, intro his life and businesses. He is committed to helping solar entrepreneurs profit from their unique gifts and passions, bringing positive energy, music, and powerful messages to keynote presentations, masterminds, coachings, and workshops. And I will say personally, uh, Dan has been a real asset for me and all of the ventures that I'm on as well. So I want to give a shout out and say thank you, Dan, for that. Thank you, Tina. And likewise. And so let's get right into it, Dan. Your focus is uh, coaching world tours, solar entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs to get to six figures quickly. What are the common mistakes that you see startup sole or entrepreneurs making? I think one of the biggest things is they have a gift or they have a talent. And I love working with heart centered solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, and even realtors that are passionate and they have too wide of a focus. And they think they can help everyone because likely they can. Mm -hmm. And when you can help everyone, it's likely that you're probably having a message for no one. So So really helping them dial that in to be specific on where they're at and what they're working on right now. Right. So a message is clear as far as what they're offering to someone. And there's a specific audience that has a need that they can fulfill. Now, they may be able to help other people with that. And if they have a clear message on what they can, who they can serve, what their problem is, how they can help out with that, it's going to help them a lot. And I've seen it so much with realtors who they've got a license in Washington State. And I can serve everyone because I want to get that commission check. Mm -hmm. And I know I can help everyone. But if you've got a new realtor that starts and says, okay, I just want to focus on this one condominium project and that's it, they become an expert quickly. And so they're recognized as an expert in that area. And so they're likely to be more successful and that will go out into other areas. And what I've found is that for entrepreneurs, it's the same thing. If they have a specific area that they're focused on, say life coaching, I'm Mm -hmm. a life coach, I help everyone. Now, if somebody got real dialed in and said, I'm a coach that helps folks that uh, may have a issue with transition Mm -hmm. and they're from 35 to 40, a female and just got focused on that message and very clear about who they serve, I think they'll have a lot more success. I've seen they have a lot more success in getting to six figures quickly. Well, we know that's true with any branding. When you're when you're branding something and it's very specific on that brand, it builds uh, everything around that specific specific C right. in branding. Right. So Dion, if someone is considering uh, a change in a career, what advice would you give them? Yeah. I, It just seems more and more that we don't have the stability that we used to have as far as careers and and Mm -hmm. the longevity and people are changing so much. And I've seen a lot of people in midlife that want to get out of what they've done. Like they got into a job doing something that they were just naturally good at, but they really want to be doing something else. And they can potentially jump to something without really considering the consequences. And what I would offer is to leave wherever you are, leave it well, or bring your best self to that and then make Mm. a clear decision moving forward. Because how you leave something is typically going to be how you enter into whatever it is, the next phase that you're going to jump into. Makes it makes sense. And Dan, uh, you know, the best coaches out there, they coach because of 
things that they've gone through and their experiences. So as an, an excellent coach, I'm sure that you've had mistakes that you've made in creating new businesses. Can you share? Well, I'd love to share that I would have done all of those things intentionally. I made all of these <laughs> mistakes of to be a great you did. coach. <laughs> of course you did. <laughs> and that is one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about this, because I've, I've made so many mistakes and uh -huh. I still do. You know, I um, one of the reasons that I went from being a CEO to coaching was to kind of start over and to see where these people are coming from to start something new. And so I've had the opportunity to have my own challenges mm. moving forward and building a coaching practice. And uh, some things for me are just that, they're focused, like I wanna help everyone. And so what's my real message? And it's a, it's a process sure. and, and develop it moving forward. So being an entrepreneur is uh, it can be so rewarding and mm -hmm. so challenging at the same time. Yeah, and and also, Dan, when you're venturing, especially if you're going into um, being a solopreneur, time is time can be uh, an issue in being able to be successful if you're wasting time. So what are areas that you can, can be the fastest way that you can start up and start making money? One of the biggest things is people have a gift, like they have a specific talent that they want to share and they feel like that is going to get them the business and they'll start working on a website, they'll start getting all of these things organized, they'll want to have a perfect business and how it looks and they'll avoid connecting with people. And the number one thing people can do getting a business going is that connection. Sure and just continue to connect and through that you're going to find out more of what their real needs are and you can then you can get into the internet marketing all of the website building mm -hmm. everything like that and you do see that a lot even if you know if you're not starting a business but in business if you're in sales you see that a lot in sales where people are putting so much focus on the building and the developing mm -hmm. the creative side of it but they're not getting connected belly to belly and right. really that's what you need um it's a great school. advice what's it's that it's old school it's old school no. um so what do most entrepreneurs avoid doing well, it's just that. I was it's just going to say, with, yeah, it's, it's got to be connecting, thing, picking right? up the phone, yes. Now, there is, there's different ways of connecting now, certainly mm -hmm. through social media, and that that's a real way that people connect. And that's really a way to get people to have that belly-to-belly -belly or the face-to-face. -face. So not avoiding people, but through mm -hmm. social media, you can connect with people and then have a conversation, but it comes down to that. And, and I think that's important, uh, Dan, You know, definitely to meet them where they're at, which is on the social media platforms. There's a lot of things that you can do as as well to um, to work with technology to get on the on their top of their page because mm -hmm. you're connecting as friends, but not to forget, and what you just said, the purpose of that is not to avoid the face-to-face. -face. The purpose of that is to get the initial connection, but you've got to pick up the phone, do the handwritten cards, yep. get face-to-face -face with them, and here's the benefit with it is majority or not. So if you can put yourself uh, aside from what the majority are doing, then you've got a huge leg up on that connection part. Would you agree? Absolutely. When I say to realtors um, is one hour connection minimum a yes. day, just one hour focus. Give yourself that space to be completely present to the people that you're connecting with. So at least start out with that and to entrepreneurs as well. Yeah, totally agree. So Dan, how can you help an entrepreneur who feels stuck, which is a lot of them, mm -hmm. uh, not being able to break through and make the money that they feel that they deserve and they know that they should be making? They're doing all of the activities, but they're still stuck. Yeah, I mean, we all have areas that we're stuck in different mm -hmm. er in different ways. And I think there's something to having a community of people that uh, have been through it before, like either with coaching or I have a meetup once a month where I get mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, solopreneurs together and we get to discuss these things. And I have a, another monthly mastermind that I put together where you go through all of these different things and each person, when they share what the challenges that they're going through, it opens up space for others to see what's possible for them, what might be getting in their way. So each person is different. Sometimes there's subconscious things that are in the way where uh -huh. they don't wanna connect with people. And um, yeah, that's, that's the value I think of coaching to be able to reveal those blind spots that everyone has. Yeah, and, and the community part of it is so important as well, especially when you're a solopreneur because you feel solo mm -hmm. and by yourself so it's and I, I do want to give a shout out for the meetup because meetup because I'm there every month Dan and how do our listeners how do my listeners connect and get there yeah it's a six figure success club Bellevue it's a meetup mm -hmm. so if you just go to meetup and go six figure success club it's the first Thursday of the month at the Bellevue Keller Williams office from 7 to 9 p.m. perfect thank so, you love to see you there
So what do you say to entrepreneurs who are great at what they do, but don't like being salesy? Don't be salesy. I was going to say salesy yeah. is not the way to go. Right. Well, what about well, people that are trying not to be salesy, but it's it's hard to get over that? And, you know, so how do you get them out of that um, that mental space that they're stuck in? Yeah, it goes down to uh, people not wanting to be salesy. That's the one. That's a reason why they don't connect with people, because mm -hmm. they think that people are thinking they're salesy. OK. And if they're really taking a stand for people and wanting to provide a service that they know is of value to these other people, mm -hmm. they're gonna develop that ability to connect and have the conversation and make sure they're asking, be open to having a conversation about working together yeah. and setting that up. Yes, and I, I I love that because there is a balance. You have to you have to ask and you have to use the right um, engaging words to to bring that in. But getting in the balance of where it's not salesy and you feel confident in the message that you're doing because it's real to you. Right. Yes. Right. Yep. And the the purpose of it is you want to help them, and in order Absolutely. to help them, you need to do business together. You got to ask yeah. them. Would you, you like to do business them. together? Exactly. So I can help you. There you go. I love. <laughs> there you go. That's how you do it. Right. So Dan, what resources do you recommend? recommend for solopreneurs starting out? Um, there's so much out there and the danger for entrepreneurs is to just keep looking for different things. So uh -huh. you're going to find something that resonates with you. You're going to find a coach. You're going to find a meetup. You're going to find um, something that's specific to your area of expertise, somebody that's doing it well that you connect with to partner with them and make an investment in yourself to move forward and make it happen. Love it. All of the resources are there. Yeah. So what do you think about the saying, do what you love and the money will follow? I like it. Mm -hmm. And it's a dangerous place. Okay, because, so explain. Because you love it is not necessarily what everyone else is going to love and want okay. to pay you for. Got it. And so just having that awareness of that business is going to happen when you're doing what you love and there's a need for it. And there, mm -hmm. it's that union of bringing that powerfully to people that have the need, communicating it effectively so they actually know to come to you. Mm -hmm. you. You may be amazing, but if you haven't crafted the ability to communicate that at a high level, you're gonna have a tough time getting going. So yes, yeah. do what you love, the passion, you know, the passion, all of that's important. Follow your bliss, I love mm -hmm. all of that. And there's a practical aspect too. Are people willing to pay you for it? Or are they just saying that's awesome and then see you later? So how do you find that out? How do you find out that the need is out there for what you're passionate about? When you find your passion, I think it's great to just start asking questions like who else is interested in this? What is okay. the audience? What are these specific people? Where do they hang out? Is uh -huh. there anybody there? And if there isn't, maybe it's going to be just be a hobby for you. Got it. So focus groups are really good in yeah. that uh, situation right. as, as well. Right. So Dan, I've got a minute left here. I have one, yeah. one question I want to ask. Um, how can people learn more about creating a six-figure income quickly? Yeah, that's great. I would say one of the first things to do is just come to the meetup to where you get to meet other entrepreneurs. You get to meet me, find out what I'm about. And I do have just a passion for serving others and helping them to do what they love and actually make money doing it. And I do provide coaching. I'd love to have a conversation. I provide that. You can go to um, the Six Figure Success Club in Bellevue or the sixfigurewowfactor.com mm -hmm. and you can just uh, sign up there and, and uh, have a complimentary session. We'll talk about your business and some specific steps you can take to make money quickly. Love it. And as your host of The Money Hour, I will tell you that Dan was an inspiration for many big things for me. Uh, my book, uh, he helped me write my song, Dream. So again, I can't uh, endorse Dan enough and the heart that he has to serve and the difference that he's making in people's lives. So Dan, thank you. Thanks Personally so much, Personally from Tina. me to you. My pleasure. Thanks. Coming up next in The Money Hour. Help, I have a court date. Have you ever said that or are you saying that right now? Important tips that you need to know. Vincent Humphrey with Humphrey & Associates right here at 1150 AM KKN after this short break.